Welcome to our third video in the Foundation Cell Biology series. In this video, we will be taking a look at the cell membrane. So hopefully by now you have done your organelle assignment and you understand what the cell membrane is, where it is, its general function in the cell. We're going to go a little bit more in depth with it because the cell membrane is a very important organelle to the cell. And let's first talk about its purpose. And when I think about the cell membrane, I like to compare it to the offensive line in football. So one of the offensive line's jobs in football is to protect the quarterback from anyone who is trying to rush him. And in the same way, the first job of the cell membrane is to protect the cell from the outside environment. Okay. Now another job of the offensive line is to let people like running backs or the quarterback if it's a run play in and out of the pocket, okay? Similarly, the cell membrane's job is also to regulate what goes in and out of the cell. And then lastly, the third job of the offensive line. Um, if you've played football, you may know or have experience that the offensive line is often the first to warn the quarterback that a blitz is coming. All right. Um, so the offensive line's purpose is also to communicate with the quarterback and to carry out the quarterback's communication. In the same way, the cell membrane communicates with the outside environment. It helps the cell interact with the environment around it. Okay. So those are our three jobs of the cell membrane. Protection, regulating what comes in and out, and communication. Now, because the cell membrane protects the cell, regulates what comes in and out, and communicates with the outside environment, it is key in maintaining homeostasis. And homeostasis means maintaining a balanced internal environment. One of the ways that your body maintains homeostasis is by regulating your body temperature. When you get too hot, your body sweats, you cool off. When you get too cold, your body shivers, and that helps you warm up. Um, we also maintain homeostasis by regulating our water content, our food, our waste. And in the same way, the cell membrane helps with maintaining this balanced internal environment in the cell. So then what is this cell membrane made of? And then the cell membrane is a phospholipid bilayer. Now once again we have a big complicated science term that we can break down and understand a little bit better. All right? We know that bi means two so as you can see it has two parts, okay? two layers in this membrane. Okay? And then it is a phospholipid. So a phospholipid is a molecule that looks like this okay? and it has a phosphate head and a lipid tail. Now before we go into the properties of this phosphate head and the lipid tail, we need to take a little detour into molecular polarity. Okay, So polarity refers to the charge on a molecule. Okay, You have run into things that are polar, like the Earth is polar. It has a north and a south pole. A magnet is polar, okay? It has a north and a south pole. A battery is polar. It has a positive and a negative end. And in the same way, some molecules are polar. So a molecule that is polar has oppositely charged ends. Okay? An example of this would be water, okay? So we've got our oxygen here and our hydrogen here, okay? Now, I don't know if you guys have ever shared the bed with a sibling or someone else, but you know those blanket hogs that you have to share the bed with? Maybe you're a blanket hog. The oxygen in water is an electron hog, and it pulls all of the electrons toward itself, okay? So it becomes negative. Now, just like you when your sibling steals the blankets and you're left out in the cold, those hydrogens are left 
with no electron. Well, with very few electrons. Okay, um, the, the electrons aren't around them much, and so the hydrogen end of a water molecule is positive, and the oxygen end is negative. Okay, it has two opposite poles, and therefore is polar. Now, what happens when you get these together is really interesting. So let's say we had another water molecule here. We all know that opposites attract, at least in chemistry, okay? And so the positive hydrogen will be attracted to the negative oxygen. And if we get another one in here, okay, the positive will attract to the negative, and the negative will attract to the positive, and they will start to kind of hold together. So that's what a polar molecule is. Polar is sometimes also called hydrophilic. Okay, I'm from Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. Philic means love or loving. Okay, hydro means water. So a polar molecule we can also call hydrophilic or water loving. It is attracted to water. Now, if we look at our phospholipid, that phosphate head is polar or hydrophilic. What if a molecule doesn't have oppositely charged ends? Okay, that molecule would be called nonpolar. Okay, and a nonpolar molecule isn't just positive, it's not negative. Um, what it is, and it's not that it has no charge, it has an even charge across the whole molecule. All right, these are like siblings that can actually share the blankets with each other. Even blanket distribution in a nonpolar molecule, you have even electron distribution. So something like a fat, which looks approximately like this, you know, we don't have different kinds of molecules all over the place. And so no one's hogging the electrons. They're all sharing well. Nonpolar is sometimes called hydrophobic. Now, you may know that phobia refers to fear or afraid. Okay, so these ones are water fearing or afraid of water. Okay, so the tails, those fatty acid tails or lipid tails on our phospholipid are nonpolar. So what happens if you mix polar and nonpolar molecules together? They will separate from each other. When you buy a bottle of Italian salad dressing, you usually have it separated into two layers, the oil and the vinegar, okay? Um, oil is nonpolar, it's a fat. Vinegar is polar, okay? Now, it stays separated because if you, all right, because when these get mixed together, the polar molecules are attracted to only the other polar molecules. And they kind of push the nonpolar ones out of the way. And the nonpolar ones are trying to get as far away from the polar ones as possible. And so the, after you shake it up, eventually that water and oil will separate. Um, and that's great, okay? But what happens when you have a polar phosphate head attached to a nonpolar lipid tail, okay? If you drop this in water, what's gonna happen? And what actually happens is it creates that bilayer, okay? These nonpolar tails turn towards the middle. They make two layers so that they can hide from the water. And the phosphate heads that like the water turn out so that they can actually be touching the water. And it is this property, because it is a phospholipid, that gives it a lot of its behaviors, okay, or how it functions. So a cell membrane, like we said, is a phospholipid bilayer, but that's not the only thing it's made of. It also has proteins stuck in and on the membrane, okay? They may be on the surface of the membrane, they may be stuck in the middle, they may be stuck on the inside. There's also proteins in it, okay? The cell membrane is also what we call a fluid mosaic, okay? Now, if we go back, you'll see there aren't actually any bonds between these molecules. They are not attached to each other. They're only held together by their love of water this way and hatred of water this way. Okay, And so, as you can see here, this lets them behave a little bit like a fluid. Okay, they are not, A cell membrane is not rigid, um, but it is flexible and can change and bend. Okay, um, We also call it a mosaic because it is made of many different pieces. A mosaic in art is one of those typically tile pieces of art where they use little tiles to make a great big image, okay? And this one we use many pieces to make a great big cell membrane. And then the last thing is that the cell membrane 
The last thing is that the cell membrane is semi-permeable. This means it lets some molecules through. but not others. All right, and we will go more in depth on that in our next video as to how we actually get across the cell membrane. Before we get there though, knowledge check. You should be able to answer these questions. What does it mean if a molecule is polar? What about if it's nonpolar? What happens when you mix polar and nonpolar molecules? What's the cell membrane made of? Okay. How does the polarity, so the charge on a phospholipid, affect the structure and behavior of the cell membrane? And then why do we call the membrane semi-permeable and a fluid mosaic? Um, if you can answer those, great, move on. If not, take a look back at the video, make sure these are in your notes, and then also ask some questions. All right. Thanks for joining us for the cell membrane. See you for osmosis and diffusion.